Hey gear seekers, I'm Nick. Typically we shoot all of our video to these. So we shoot to M.2 drives and SSDs, but we have a little bit of a problem. First of all, check this thing out, right? This is our monitor review PC and the PC I use in the studio for putting stuff on the monitor in general. The problem is the GPU is gone. It's an 11th gen system and I want to upgrade it a little bit. However, because we're changing our workflow slightly, it uses an ITX motherboard. And ITX motherboards typically don't have 10 gigabit ethernet. But ladies and gents, I have a fix for all of the problems with this system. We're gonna put a huge GPU in here. We're gonna put 10 gigabit ethernet on here in an ITX motherboard. But before that, here's a word from today's video sponsor. This video is brought to you by VOPSCDKey.com. Have you ever installed Windows only to see that watermark of death? You don't need to fork out a couple of hundred dollars for a key. You can grab one from today's video sponsor from VOPSCDKey.com for a tenth of the price. You can use our code GEAR to get 25% off. How good is that? That takes that already cheap Windows key and makes it even cheaper. It's as easy as placing your order. Bingo bango. You've got your new key on your orders page. You chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code GEAR for 25% off. Link in the description. On with the video. 10 gig ethernet on an ITX motherboard is a unique problem. There are motherboards that do do it, but they're more geared towards small servers and stuff. I wanna use commodity grade hardware to do it. So I've got this 10 gig TP-Link ethernet card. It uses an Aquantia 10 gig ethernet controller. We've used cards like this TP-Link one in the past. The reason why I use this, it's cheap and it's just uses RJ45 Ethernet. Don't need to use any transceivers or anything exotic, it just works. I'm gonna be putting this 4080 Supreme X in the NR200P Max. This card is the maximum GPU length, but it's not as simple as just saying, hey, it's the same length, so it's gonna fit. The next thing is, how do we get 10 gig Ethernet on an ITX motherboard? Good question. This is something that I devised in a really weird way because you can get M.2 10 gigabit ethernet cards, but it's on the motherboard and I can't run a cable from outside into the case through it. I kind of went searching on Amazon for a way to do this. And the way I figured it out was I found this device. The first part of the link is an M.2 to PCIe riser cable, but it looks more like uh, a mini SAS cable, right? And then that goes into another board with another M.2 slot on it. And then we've got a by four PCIe slot, which means we can plug our ethernet card into this and we have 10 gig ethernet. But look at the first problem, right? The bottom card is too long. So we're gonna to have to modify that. Before we go modifying anything, I should probably explain why this is pretty important to us. First of all, as mentioned in the intro, we shoot all of our footage to M.2 drives and SSDs. We shoot in B-RAW and ProRes, and these files are massive. The issue is when we're done filming, I fire up my editing PC, I copy the files to my editing PC, and then I start editing that way. The problem is this slows down our workflow considerably because I have to go to the other room and power up my editing PC. That becomes a bit of a problem when we're shooting for a whole day and then I'm dumping footage at the end of the day. Why not just dump all the footage and ingest everything while we're working? So this machine is gonna help with that because we're changing our workflow in the way that we've got this new QNAP M.2 NAS that allows us to connect the Thunderbolt. So my editing PC has Thunderbolt, that plugs into Thunderbolt and it's got 10 gigabit ethernet. So we can ingest all the footage onto that NAS for working and then I can edit over Thunderbolt. So it makes everything, <laughs> it sounds complicated, but for us to be able to move files with that 10 gig speed from the studio will save us a lot of time later down the line when we get to editing. And when I say we, I mean me, because I edit the video. The next thing we've got to overcome is because we're using a 4080 and a 12 volt high power connector, we need to change the power supply. And I know this setup for this video has taken a while, but hear me out, it's gonna be worth it. I've got this 1100 watt Cooler Master power supply to replace the one that's already in the NR200P Max, which is like an 850, but it's got a 12 volt high power connector on it, which is broken. We're gonna put a 13900K in it. This is a board that we used in a build not too long ago 
the world's smallest 3.9 liter build. I'll put a link to that in the description if you want to see it, but it's not meant for overclocking. We're not going to push this thing as hard as possible. We just want it to be a relatively fast gaming PC with 10 gig ethernet. 32 gigs of RAM, pretty boring standard stuff. I'll put a PC part pick list down below in the description. One terabyte storage, that's all we need for this system. And obviously 13900K. You know one cool thing about this motherboard I realized like after using it, it's got an M.2 slot on the back, which is kind of a requirement for this. But the heatsink for the M.2 drive is like the whole back plate of the motherboard. So you remove the back plate, put the M.2 drive in the back side, and then in the front side, we're going to put that adapter for the 10 gig Ethernet. The setup is really long for this video, but it's worth <laughs> it's it. It's trying to make you feel It's awful. so worth it. It's going to be sick. It works. Everything works. I've tested it. And if it doesn't work, shit. This video is not coming out. Yeah. <laughs> I've been hyping this video up for myself for like weeks in my head. I've been planning this thing for ages and the day is here. I went with the Cooler Master Power Supply for a couple of reasons. First of all, 12 volt high power. The one that came with this one is cooked. But one thing I forgot was the built-in cables with the connectors for this power supply are different to the one that we're putting in. So instead of me just replacing the power supply and plugging all the cables back in, I've got to replace everything. The reason why I'm doing it in this case is it's really small and I searched for a week for the perfect case for this. And there was just nothing that I liked as much as this because such a good integrated solution, although we're flipping that all in its head today because we've got to cut all of these cables out and modify. You might be wondering, why does this cable bend this way and not the other way? Well, this is the only way that they make this M.2 adapter. It would have made so much more sense if it came out the other way, but I think I know why they've done it this way. Because this supports mounting in many different sized M.2 slots. I knew someone would ask about that, so I just thought I'd you know, nip it in the bud while I'm thinking about it. We need to make two modifications before we can go on and mount everything else up. First of all, I need to cut this PCB. You can use a Dremel to do this. It's part of the ground plane, so we're not going to be cutting through any wires on this part of the PCB. If you take a closer look at the PCB, you'll notice that all of the wiring is at the connector end, and there's quite literally nothing going on on this end. And the next modification we have to make is, I, I measured this up, is I need to make a cutout on this back plate for the ethernet connection so we can plug everything in. I guess it's cutting time. Turned out all right. I reckon we just get a file and clean it up. Not bad at all. 
This is one of the most uh, strange things that I've ever done with modding. Basically the way I did this is I used a PCIe slot cover at the bottom to hold the card up. I insulated it so it won't spark or kill the network card. I then took off the rear bracket of the card and then used some zip ties to tie it through some of the holes. And now the card's not going anywhere. And when we connect it up, all we need to do is push the PCIe slot connector onto the edge of the card and we're good to go. Obviously we plug all the other stuff in, but let's get this all buttoned up and then see if it works. I mean, it's gonna work, but you know, let's try it out. I tested this already, it works, but I don't know if it works after I cut the PCB, so yeah, well, it'll be fine. This is a good time to mount the bracket to the GPU. This sounds crazy, but without doing it this way, the GPU just does not fit inside the case. Well, not easily anyway. And this is the way I found it to make it work the best. This took a little bit of massaging last week to make fit perfectly, but I figured out what the problem was with it fitting. And now it goes in beautifully every single time. First thing we want to do is plug in the 12 volt high power. We then need to be very creative with this. And we have to push the AIO tubes out of the way with the GPU and with a bit of luck, it should fit. There you go. It's so tight, but it does go in. Big GPU, 10 gig networking. The last thing we need to do is plug in the PCIe slot section. We'll do this outside of the case because it's much easier. Basically, we're just gonna plug in the riser cable, just like so clips into place. We need additional SATA power to power the slot, which is fine. We'll plug that in. We'll tuck the cables away. And then we'll push your slot onto the card. And we should be good to go now. I'll put a bit of electrical tape on the back side of this just to cover it. So in case the case ends up touching it in any way, it doesn't fail and kill anything here. All right, here's the moment of truth. Plug in the 10 gig ethernet, power up the system. It works, it powers up. I've pre-set up this Windows before filming with all the network shares and everything already connected. I've only got one share, it's ready to go. So if this 10 gig NIC works, then we'll be in business. All right, there's nothing happening down here. All right, time for a little bit of investigation. Let's just take a look at the network settings. We've got the adapter showing up here. We've got a 10 gig link, which is perfect. All right, let's take a look at a network share. We'll read from the storage first. Let's just paste. Oh, that's closer to 2.5 gig. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, this thing's only hitting two and a half gig a second. What is going on here? Why is it doing this? Very, very strange. I think I've figured out what's going on. It's our storage. When I'm copying files from the storage, I'm getting about three gig down, but to the storage is 10 gig. That's the thing with this PC. If I'm pulling files down to it, I don't ever need to do that. This is to copy files to the network. So the upstream speed is 10 gig and that's all we need. So it's working as far as I'm concerned. Yep, it just works. Well, not quite, but yes, it does work. I'm fairly happy with this system. The only issue being that downstream speed is only just over three gig a second and we're not getting that full 10 gig down, but that's not the point of the system. It's not for pulling files to it. It's for pushing files over to our network storage and it does that at 10 gig. That's the whole point of it. What I think might be happening here is because this is a B760 board, not enough PCIe lanes are being utilized. You have to remember 
For the back M.2 drive, we've got four lanes. For this card, we've got four lanes, and then we've got 16 lanes for the GPU. So if you do a little bit of math, you can figure it out that that is all of the lanes required. Like the 24 lanes, that's probably as much as this platform handles. It's probably only running at PCIe by two, which is why we're getting that problem, which is also okay. We can investigate this further, but I may update you guys on this later. I'll update you on this now. Here's the story with B760. It's only got four PCIe Gen 3 lanes in total compared to B660, which had more. So they reduced the amount of PCIe Gen 3 lanes, increased the PCIe Gen 4 lanes. So we do lose a little bit of connectivity with B760. So here's the kicker. I'm gonna swap this board out off video because you guys just don't wanna see this. I've got an ITX Z690 board that I'll probably switch out to make this work exactly how I want it to work. Yeah, the downstream is only three gig, and we still get 10 gig up, but it is something that is gonna drive me a little bit crazy just thinking about it, even though I'm not gonna be using it in that way. That's just how it is with tech sometimes. Sometimes it works exactly how you want, sometimes it doesn't, especially with mini ITX and small form factor. Sometimes you will make sacrifices and sometimes those sacrifices aren't exactly what you're expecting. Back to you, Nick or me or whatever. The workflow is gonna change because we've got a new NAS from QNAP. They sent it over for review and it's something that I think we all use because of the interesting way that it works. So make sure you're subscribed to see that review coming very, very shortly. And I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek and do you guys notice anything different about the studio? Does it look any different? I don't know. Something changed. I don't know, it looks the same to me. Yep, thanks for watching. Watch this, right here. There's gonna be a video right here. We're doing more networking stuff and more fun stuff like this. I love modding stuff and doing weird stuff like that. Don't, don't you, that's my <laughs> don't you point. I'm helping. Okay, thank you for helping. Thanks for watching. You heard the lady.